um, and that should leave you with the equivalent of um, a six by six by seven block. Yeah, so you should have all those pieces solved right now. And then you should stop there because we're gonna go on to the next step, which is to start solving via reduction. And what the idea of the reduction method is that you um, join up all the edge pieces and the center pieces um, so that they're analogous to the edge and center pieces of a three by three. So um, this group of five would be like an edge, just one edge piece on a three by three. And these 25 center pieces would be analogous to the center of a Rubik's cube, a three by three Rubik's cube. So um, right now, the first thing we have to do is we have to um, solve these two centers. Uh, we know that all the pieces here have to be blue and all the pieces here have to be yellow because the center here is yellow and the center here is blue. So we have to find yellow center piece, pieces here that we want to go up here and corresponding uh, blue pieces up here that have to go down. So let's take for instance this center inner edge piece. We have to find, we know this has to go up because it's yellow and this is the blue face. So we have to find the corresponding inner center edge piece, uh, which is up here, that has to go down. So we see this one has to go up, and this one is blue and has to go down. So what we have to do first is we have to align these two pieces. So this inner center edge piece is in line with this inner center edge piece here. They're both in the same analogous place on each face. And what you do now is you move up the column of pieces which contains um, the inner center edge piece. Um, next what you do is you turn the top face 90 degrees um, so that the inner center edge piece is now in a different place. So it was here before and now it's up here. And then what you do is you move the column up which uh, now contains that piece in the new place, which is right here. So we move this column up to uh, move that up. Then what you do is you move the top back um, in the place it was before. Then you move the original column down. Um, you turn the top uh, in the original direction. Then you move the second column down. So basically you keep doing that until all of the pieces, center pieces are in the correct places. I'll do another simple example and I'll move, move on to some more complex um, movement of pieces like more than one at a time. So let's try doing um, a wing piece. Um, this one is not in the correct face because it's blue and this is the yellow face and neither is this one. Uh, these two are in analogous places, as you can see. This one is in the right and almost touching the top. This one's at the right, almost touching the top. So what we do is we move the column up that contains uh, the edge piece, the center wing edge piece, and we turn the top 90 degrees so that it's not in that column anymore. See, we moved it from here to here then we move up the uh, second column, which contains the uh, wing edge piece in a new place, center wing edge piece. Then we turn the top back, we move the first column down, we turn the top in the original direction, and then we turn the second column down. And then I guess you can turn it back, I don't know. Okay, so now to do two pieces or more at a time, you have to find pieces that are in analogous um, clumps or squares. Uh, they don't even have to be in squares, but I'll show you. Um, so these three pieces here and these three pieces here are in corresponding squares, as you should probably agree. So we can actually swap their positions at the same time. And the way we do this is similar to how we moved one piece at a time. First we move the column that contains the uh, three pieces on the bottom. 
So now they're up here. Then we turn the top 90 degrees. And we couldn't turn it this way because now it's still contained within this column. So we have to turn it this way. So now it's in these three columns that are not turned up. Then we turn the columns that contain the piece in the new position up. We turn the top back. We turn the first column down. We turn the top in the original direction. And then we turn the second columns down, like that. And now theoretically we should have just sorted out all of those. Now I'll do another example. See these four here and these four here are analogous on each face and they are in the correct position. So we're going to move the column that contains them up. Um, so now they're here. And well actually I'll, sh I'll do something a little different. You can start them out horizontal like this and it works much the same way. So we're here and here. We move these up, these four columns up so that um, these four pieces are now on top. Then we move them into an unoccupied, I mean an unmoved column right here. We move that column up. We move the top back. Then we move the first set of columns down. We move the top in the original direction. And then we move this back down. Okay. So basically you keep doing that. I'll do some more examples. Um, so now we're just down to individual pieces. So we have this piece and this piece are analogous. We move this piece up. We turn the top. So now it's here. We turn that up. We turn the top back. We turn this first column down. We turn the top in the original direction. And we turn this back down. So now we have four pieces. And we're making progress. Um, we're going to switch these two pieces which are in analogous positions. Move the first column up and the top. We turned it clockwise. We turn the second column up. So now we turn the top counterclockwise. Turn the first column down. We turn the top in the original direction, which was clockwise. Turn the second column down. And now, press so we only have three. Now your cube should look like this. And you have two centers solved and you still have your block intact. Okay, so now your next goal will be to uh, pair up all five edge pieces for each of the edges so that uh, the cube will be analogous to a 3x3. Three three. And here I already see three edge pieces um, in the correct place, so I'm going to continue on that and work on my yellow-blue edge. So here's a yellow-blue inner wing piece. I'm going to put it up here so that it's aligned with these pieces. So when I move this down, it'll make a nice, uh, a nice quadruplet. And then my last piece is right here. And I have to put it in the top in such a way that I can um, join it with the rest, like that. Okay, you see that? So that's what's going to happen. Uh, and once I have them all in these parallel spots, I can just simply move them down like that. So now I have my edge. Now I have to move it into an empty space like that. And I move this back. And then I simply realign all these guys. And there. So now. I've made my first edge, and as you saw, the concept is to align all the pieces um, in these spaces, and then you join them up by turning the centers, like that, and then once you've made your edge, you put it in the top, and you align the centers back up, and then you turn them back to restore the cube to its original state. So I'm going to continue doing that. Um, it looks like we're not as looking now because we don't have any that contain three. We have this that contains two, and I'll just uh, try aligning up the rest of the pieces. Okay, so we have two, we have one, which we can align. And let's see, this piece here needs to go. It's kind of hard using the camera as the uh, view of the cube. Okay, so this piece has to go down here. 